What's up, y'all? This is Alexandria Galore, and I am back with another one. So today, we are going to be doing this bob wig. I'm going to show you the process that I go through as far as bleaching, dyeing, and I actually am going to cut for the first time. Any other time I get my bobs, I leave them as is. However, the factory cut them, or I have my mom or best friend to help me cut it into a uh, better, like, blunt cut look but this time i'm doing it all by myself now i did get my mom to kind of clean up that back area that you can't see once you're wearing it but i promise everything else i did y'all gonna see it on camera so first things first i'm putting the got to be on my roots of the wig um this is just so the bleach doesn't seep through it works out better if you are patient with it because you should do about two to three layers let it dry in between and let it sit and get on the hair before you start the process um so right here i just put developer on the lace this is not mixed with any bleach powder it is just straight up developer um and i let that sit for about 30 minutes maybe even an hour but what this does is it helps penetrate the knots better at least in my experience i'm not an experienced cosmetologist so hey if somebody else tell you it doesn't work i would just say try it out for yourself but anytime that i have tried it it's worked in my favor um it makes the bleach just come through like scalp versus you know doing just the bleach by itself and you definitely want to be careful with it because it can go like really really well to the point where it may seep through because of how saturated it is so just be careful when you're doing that um so now i'm starting out plucking and i used to be able to pluck very well but somewhere along the lines i just got scared and i would just do minimum plucking and i don't really care for the look i mean it works for whenever i'm wearing something but i wanted to get back into my extensive plucking kind of similar to what your natural hairline would look like so with my plucking technique, I like to pull some hair to the front during some type of part. I want to have an even part so that my plucking is even. And then I just go in sporadic motions and kind of just pull hair back. You want to make sure you're not too heavy handed so you're not putting holes in the lace, which is something that I was coming up with problems with. But it also depends on the tweezers you're using. Make sure you're using some slanted tweezers and you want to just kind of pull the hair back as you go you can even check for holes in between kind of pull up that lace every now and then just to make sure that you're not being too heavy-handed um and this is really just advice you know in general you can get away with it if you're doing your own hair but i mean who wants to have holes in their own lace but you definitely want to check if you're doing a client um so this is what it looks like at this point and like i said when i do plucking i'm gonna go through and mess with it multiple times until it's to my liking even when i put it on my head but this is what we're starting off to work with so i went ahead and put the wax on those little edges part because y'all already know i'm about to do my little lift once I hot comb everything back. So I'm just using the hot comb to get all of the wax off the lace. Um, you have to be careful with this too because I have burnt holes into lace by letting that hot comb sit and try to get all that wax up. It's better to just kind of put the heat on there for a little bit and then just rub it in with your finger. And then whatever doesn't come off, once you're installing the wig, you can use a blow dryer or something that's, you know, less, uh, I would say less, dangerous than a hot comb because you definitely don't want to put a hole in your lace especially not that close to where you're not cutting that lace off in order to get a nice even cut you want to make sure you're going through and you're flat ironing the entire wig um especially for a bob because it'll have little pieces that kind of wave up in that back area but it may look straight all around. So you wanna kinda of go through in sections and make sure that it is as straight as possible. Cause once you start cutting and you notice that you got you a wavy piece because you didn't flat iron it. So now you go through and flat iron it. You may notice a lot of unevenness and nobody wants to deal with that. So just flat iron it all around before you get started cutting. Make sure you're grabbing every little piece that you can find and just get it as straight as possible. Um, I always add bio silk to the hair before I start flat ironing. A little bit goes a long way, but that's pretty much all you need. Get you some bio silk so it can get as straight as possible. Get your flat iron and then, you know, you should be looking like this. You want to look, you know, silk pressed out before you start cutting. 
all right so moving on to the cutting i am taking some clippers y'all these are just my daddy clippers i have no idea what the name is i can't give you no recommendations on which ones are better or whatever like just get you some regular like clippers if you got a man in the house and he got his own that's even better just make sure you clean them off um so you're just gonna go in and i wanted to start at the lowest point possible so as of right now it kind of looks like i'm just doing a trim because i don't want to go high and then i don't have room for mistakes i want to start very low so if i do make a mistake and make it uneven or i cut up too high in some type of way then i can go and fix that if i go and get too short we're going to be giving it the mo in a minute and that's not the goal so right now i'm just going in i'm making sure everything is even and I'm going to do that a little bit more with scissors as well, but I want to get the overall look with the clippers. The clippers are really going to give you that bluntness. As you can see, I'm going in with my scissors just to clean up any unevenness. Um, it is already blunt cut, but the scissors just help with the evenness. And then this is me just combing her through. She was a little stiff there because I ended up putting wax on the hair. But I promise she does give stiff wear with, with it on my head. Um, I decided not to put it on and show you guys like I normally do because we're going to do a whole nother video installing it. So stay tuned for that. Um, it is going to be a glueless install, y'all. I don't use glue. But that's pretty much what she's giving. And if you want to see a surprise, stay tuned because I am about to show you guys the wig that I gave my mother for Christmas, which is completely different than what I'm showing y'all. So if you want to see what that looks like, stay tuned to the end. But if not, I will say thank y'all for watching watching all right for those of y'all who stayed this is a 20 inch kinky closure wig um i don't sell kinky curly but my mama is obsessed with this texture so i had to get it for her and if it works out i may sell it but i went ahead and did the same process that i did with my bob put a little developer on her lace i bleached it i plucked it uh, she is not a baby hair girl, so no baby hairs. It's just giving you pretty much Donna Summer 70 type of look. This is very high maintenance hair, so you're going to have to keep it moisturized, conditioned, all of that good stuff. But it came out really cute, and I'm loving it. And if it works out, you guys will see this on the website. If not, I may just get me one. And here's a little bonus. Here's her little reaction, just a one-two. Just a little bit of the reaction, y'all. She was talking about it all day.